Hi guys, welcome back. So recently I did a sketchbook of my photography piece within college and I think it was the second year that I did it win. And actually I found the other year one, so I think this one actually was meant to be the second year whereas the other one was meant to be the first year because that was more of an introduction, whereas this one is actually my second year because it's level three, I believe. Not 100% sure, we'll just have to go through the sketchbook and see how we're doing. My name's Laura, welcome to my channel. I do a lot of artworks, including going back through my sketchbooks because they're very educational and it gives me a point of reference of what I've achieved because it's always good to look back. Projects and subjects that you see that just kind of stops and actually you go, oh, I'm, I'm actually still interested in that. I'll expand onto that. So like recently I went back through a load of collages that I created in my first year of university and I've actually started carrying it on because I found some of my media pieces had just stopped and haven't become, hadn't become or transitioned into the final piece product. It's a lot of talking, so we're just gonna add some uh, text to this and just jump straight into my first page of my photography book. As always, health and safety is very important for the whole of, well, the process of art. There's always like a tick box situation, so we've got, some more writing yes so this is definitely second year so my other sketchbook was from the first year i don't know why i said it was the second year maybe because of the i went off the years that was that was there but anyway this is just a brief that we were given to be able to say what we needed to do to get the highest grade and just an overview of the whole project so artist research artist research as always comes into it reintroducing ourselves back into the dark photography room and then we've got two oh contact sheets that's what they're called so this is what i meant by burning process because we were told we had to manipulate exposed films that we did from the first year and if we didn't have them we went out and did a load more photography we also went in and dived into the digital photography and went to a vast variety of settings that for me I don't necessarily change my settings because I feel like I don't need to if I want to on my digital digital camera it has like photography mode it has portrait mode nighttime mode it's very simple I don't have to change very much it's simplified so much for me that I don't need to faff around with the settings it doesn't mean that I don't appreciate the settings what you want from you don't want to just take a picture basically you want to get the best version of that situation because i want to act like when we do, we're doing digital digital photography that if you take one picture that's one picture less same process with the film if you've got only got 20 films you obviously want to make the most out of, 20, out of the 20 so i kind of give that approach towards digital photography as well if you can't hear that that was my cat <laughs> she's been very clingy I think it's because my partner's out and normally he's in on a Monday. So she's been very demanding. Either she wants food or she just wants to sleep on you. So uh, she does tend to pop her face in now and again. So uh, if you see a hairy hair, hairy hair, hairy face, it's just her. Um, so more artist research and contact sheet. I believe these photographs actually came in handy because I ended up using them for my final piece within my college degree. Oh, sorry, my memories are coming back to me and I'm just like trying to figure out which which structure they come in. So I remember using these photographs for a final piece, but I think it was for the first semester. So like December time that we used it for, because you do two final pieces. You do one at the end of December, which you took to your interviews for university. So yeah, so it was that one. And then I did a second final piece at the end of the second year, which... I actually still have because I think for me they're masterpieces and I don't think I'd ever ever be able to get rid of them because they're just they're purely me and I love that but um, enough of that <laughs> artist research back back to the uh, sketchbook bit of artist research I don't think I've actually come across him before or her not sure because I haven't really gone into photography very much admittedly and then we've start the manipulation of these images so we've just got, oh, I don't know what happened here, just kind of disappeared into the realm of a sketchbook. And we've got some figurative photography with some sort of manipulation. I think that's mostly, I think that was just water manipulation. It made the 
print lighter. It's got how a camera works, more manipulation in it. Yeah, so this is one of the prints that I burnt the, I want to say contact sheet, so the actual strip with a lighter and it created these lovely burning marks and they were beautiful because you could change the contrast to focus more on the burnt marks rather than the image itself and that for me was stunning. That was one of the pieces that I actually sold and actually this is another one that I sold. I scratched into the final piece. I don't know if I've still got it. If I do, that'd be amazing. What happened to all these images? <laughs> they just kind of disappeared. No idea why. Oh yeah, so here. So this is an image of the image. So this was like the, one of the final pieces. This is where I've like scratched into it. And I also put it into Photoshop to be able to manipulate the image even more. To try and get something out of it. This was, well it's easy to rectify. You just do the process of dark room photography. But I wanted to manipulate it even more. By putting it through Photoshop. And then I've got ooh, this bit. So manipulating it even more, so you didn't just manipulate the film, you also manipulated the outcome. So this is a segment of a photo, which I cut down and I just burnt and did the photography, photography, the Photoshop use of changing the exposure and contrast and all the lovely little bits and pieces, which I discovered through an artist's influence. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's the final image again. So this is some artist research that I did whilst at Bath College. Students there were exhibiting anyway. And this is when cyanotypes start to come in. So it's a very beautiful process. It gives this really lovely blue effect. Where it's, it's a bit like paint. So you put it onto a piece of paper. You have to use it in a dark room setting where it's literally pitch black and there's no influence of light at all. And then you expose the paper for I think about 20 to 30 minutes and then the image will come through so where the white is that is opaque and where the colour is that is translucent so it lets the light through because the, it's exposure from the light that makes it react and it's a lovely process I thoroughly enjoy the colour of it as well oh there we go so this is a perspex sheet of the film so technically if I had some cyanotype paper and the paint I could take this out of my sketchbook and expose it and create several different types to create this sort of effect so it's handy to have a sketchbook like this because you can go back and recreate artworks and find how to do it as well like obviously you can google it but if you have a step-by-step -step process which is basically what the sketchbook is it's very handy because you can just go from A to B in your own words, hopefully if you explained it well enough. If not, you can go to Google and YouTube and all that lovely other bits and pieces. But because I've got that, I can now create several cyanotypes of that image, which is lovely because this is an unfocused version of a picture that I took from digital. Then I converted it into a film, I believe, edited it in Photoshop and then printed it out to then scratch out some of the images of it to create this very lovely contrast. So these white lines will be crisp and blue when they come through and then the dark will just be light. So it'll be like a opposite exposure image. And then we've got some more images that I translated into an actual painting. I still actually have this painting. I don't know how or why but I cannot I can't bring myself to paint over it I think it's just because it was one of those ones where the color and the theme just worked really well oh another screen Not screen another perspex bit so technically so technically I could take this out and expose more sound types which is exciting because it means I can actually go away and add it to my massive list of materials that I need to buy to be able to create this process. Oh, I was kind of disappointed. I was like, oh look, this is what I've done. But this is an artist research page, which is beautiful because look at all these crisp lines that you've got from the 
people i reckon they've had the shutter i think it's slightly open so it means it's not a single shot it's it's because these people are moving they're spreading about so this person is originally here but obviously as they've taken the image they've come a bit closer so it gives this sense of movement and line and it's just beautiful but knowing that i've got these perspex means i can go away and like i said add to my massive list of mediums that i need to buy to carry on my process and this actually does remind me of a process that i'm actually doing right now and um, i'll just quickly get it so if you are new to my channel i do a lot of art <laughs> obviously and recently i've been doing these resin slash blaster pours and carvings so this is a just a resin disc of leftover resin and i've only partly filled it with resin it's all resin left over from well obviously resin pores that I don't want to waste and it's also filled with acrylic skins and resins and, and resin skins to avoid waste as always. Waste is a massive thing within the art industry without you even knowing it. And I poured plaster on top of it and then started carving into it and when the carving was done I then rubbed charcoal into the grooves to create this lovely textured effect which I think works splendidly, it's really correlates towards this effect. Not completely, but it just reminded me of the whole experience of exposure and the contrast between the two. Because technically, I can, I can, I need to clean this up. See where I haven't carved into. It should be pristine and clean, just like this one I've got here. So it should be more of this color rather than it's very smudgy. So I just need to go back over it and make it more crystal clear like this. So yeah, that's just a little plug in for my own artwork. <laughs> that I just wanted to include because I just had that eureka moment of going oh my god it's very similar to something that I'm doing right now and then we come to the next page I wonder what happened to all my <laughs> images maybe they fell out or I ripped them out or something and just try to do something with them oh yeah so I've got a bit of film here which I think is just a black bit of film that I then blew up to create these marks Maybe I was trying to expose it on top of an image already. No idea. Lots of burning, which is always a lovely image to see because the textures of it is just beautiful. And if you compare, well, if you complement it with the correct image, you can create a masterpiece easily. Some more images, people. That was actually a basement somewhere in Bath which I overexposed because this part was very dark and I wanted to get in these lovely marks but I wanted this to be the centerpiece of the whole thing it's not a masterpiece it's just one of those one of the layers that I had to get through to be able to make it and then the final piece I believe yes so this is the final piece this is just like a an overview of it and then I've got that image which is the image of before where I took the image changed the composition by either flipping it or changing the settings of it this is actually a printout of it so I should have it on my computer somewhere where I've gone through all the process of editing it and then scratch out little bits I've also got there's two little people down there which I never noticed before but because some bits are in focus and then you've got the sense of three dimensions because you've got this scratching surface on the foreground and then you've got the people in the background and you've got the trees and little bits within the background and that creates a lovely sense of depth which gives you this lovely idea of space but it's still very textured and the combination of it but you've also got a resting point because the main focus is actually this tree but then it's also battling with this scratchiness but also the contrast of it is just lovely lots of words <laughs> basically then I've also got it's the same image but this one actually has another well the burning effect on top of it so I combined two images on top so I've got this one originally which I then exposed another image on top using I believe it's Photoshop so I just changed the tran transaction the opacity of the two images to create this beautiful well combination because you can see bits of it have been changed and there's random bits of images from a different image going on top. 
this one's the exposure and the contrast inverted or exverted I can't remember quite the same thing missing something <laughs> and then I've also got a burning effect another burning effect don't know what happened there image has just disappeared and a massive overview of my dark room photography so I've also got some more images I, where have I stopped <laughs> why have I just decided to do a massive explanation and overview and then carried it on maybe I decided to do that and then I stuck in some more images just to fill up the sketchbook and here we are <laughs> We actually do still have some of the exposed pieces. Let's see if I can get some of them out. Yes. So you can see where I've burnt it. Just there. You can see some of the images on it. It's very, very dark. Oh, okay. So... You can't really see it on this, but this one is, if I just take it back just a second. So this one here is actually this screen here. And this is unedited. So if I printed this one, well, did the process of the well photography, this is what would turn out because it has the exactly same image. Whereas this one here, but obviously not in perspective, but as an actual image. So technically I could expose this image on top of this one at the same time to create this image unedited so obviously more towards the black and white rather than a subtle hue of the blue this is quite exciting guys you have no idea how excited I am of this so not only have I got the original film I've also got the perspex to be able to use to make cyanotypes but if I wanted to create just a normal image I can do that with these two prints here I've also got some of the other exposures which actually weren't featured in this film because I've just had a little quick look and none of them are actually in this film or in this sketchbook how exciting is that oh so on that note guys I'd like to end this video that was quite an eventful sketchbook for me because I didn't realize how expansive and direct of a photograph process I went into and how amazing the outcome actually came out and the fact that I've got the perspex to be able to curate some more cyanotypes as long as I get the materials and I have the right darkness within a room that I can then curate. I do actually have a room that's very dark it's actually underneath the stairs so I'm gonna have to crouch paint it and then expose it properly so that's something to obviously look forward to and also because I've got the films the original films I can well I can actually send them off to be exposed with my other sets of films that I've got within my film camera so oh god there's another there's I can I can sense another project coming along or at least the starting of a project because at the moment my projects because I am full-time in retail they take a couple of years to properly develop compared to my university which normally takes about six months to a year which is not it's not the end of the world you know I'm an adult I understand that I have to work for someone else at the moment to be able to afford things that I want to be able to buy including a lot of art materials I don't necessarily need but yeah the whole process I'm, I'm really excited actually to be able to think about that this project could be relaunched just by the simple fact of just buying some cellar type paper and paint and moving on from that bit so um I'm, I'm generally sitting on my seat and just jiggling about because I'm so happy <laughs> but yeah I hope you guys thoroughly enjoyed this project and the sketchbook and going through all the emotions of me of my flashbacks and rediscovering the fact that I've still got my films that I can then process onto a further outcome and this has definitely got me excited about the film that I've actually got in my camera that I want to be able to send off to expose to then realize what's going to be on that film because some of the, the images that I've got on there are actually a couple years old and because I've got this sketchbook I can go back through the steps to be able to redesign and hopefully come up with an outcome that's going to take that's taking me about four years to be able to get there in the first place but yeah I hope like I said I hope you guys enjoyed it please leave this please leave a comment of what you thought down below and like and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this as well 
If you like also there's my eBay selling account which is where you'll find all my artworks I feature on my channel as well as a couple of extras. There's also a PayPal donation page if you'd like to make a donation. If you can't do any of that just like and subscribe because that really does help me in the long term of becoming financially free which means I can move full time into being an artist. But in the meantime thank you guys again and I shall see you next time. Bye!